trying his best. Look at Fury! What unbelievable upper body movement defensively! The Gypsy King, Tyson Fury! Tyson Fury is not what comes to mind when you think of the heavyweight boxing champion of the world. <laughs> this is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. There you go. Does that look like a fighter's body? Clearly not. But appearances can be deceiving, as Fury's physique belies his tremendous skill and in-ring intelligence, which has made him a nightmare for every fighter who's dared step in the ring with him. From the moment he was born, his story is one of overcoming tremendous odds. And in an era where heavyweight boxing has lost much of its luster, he's the rare showman still able to cross over into the mainstream. He, he's whispering in my ear right now. Okay. Go easy, go easy, go easy. He's really whispering me. I love you, man. I love you, man. You're the champion. This is the story behind the man they call the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Tyson Luke Fury was born on August 12, 1988 in the Withenshaw area of Manchester, England to Irish parents Amber and John Fury. His mother had had 14 total pregnancies, of which only four of the children survived, including Tyson, who was born three months premature and weighed one pound when he was born. He was given the name Tyson after the world heavyweight champion because his father called him a fighter at birth. The rest of the family were also fighters. Fury's family was of Irish traveler descent and bare knuckle fighting and boxing ran in his DNA. His father competed in the 80s as Gypsy John Fury, both as a bare knuckle boxer and professional boxer. And all of his uncles and cousins have either trained or competed in the sport. And according to his father, it left a lasting impression on Tyson. He watched everything, all the old Rocky movies. He liked the Rocky themes. He was dancing to them and this, that, and the other. He always wanted to play punching hands and all that job. Fury left school at the age of 11 and joined his father and three brothers, Tarmac and Rhodes, and began boxing and training at the same age. At first, his father wasn't so happy that his son was following in his footsteps, saying, you're a big fat kid, you're never going to get into boxing in your life, and I've never really taught him much because I didn't want him to box anyways, and he comes and does what he did and it just shined. Fury's natural abilities began to develop rather quickly, and he was ready to enter the world of amateur boxing, but being a traveler caused him and his family to be outsiders everywhere they went. Travelers have been persecuted for thousands of years. No matter what I achieve and, and who I be to what country I represent, deep down I'll always ever be a dirty jippo. As an amateur, Fury represented both England and Ireland, winning a bronze and silver medal for England at the AIBA Youth World Boxing Championships in 2006 and the European Junior Championship in 2007. As a junior, Fury ranked third in the world, but wasn't selected to represent Great Britain in the 2008 Olympics. Fury tried to qualify for Ireland instead, but was forced to withdraw from the Irish National Championship after officials submitted a protest regarding his eligibility because he wasn't born in Ireland. In 2008, after winning the ABA Super Heavyweight title, Fury turned professional, with his father and uncles training him and decided not to wait for the 2012 Olympics. He finished with an amateur record of 31 and 4, including 26 knockouts. Fury was a mammoth of a heavyweight boxer. Standing at 6 foot 9 inches tall, he towered over most of his competition. He made his professional debut at the age of 20 against Hungarian fighter Bela Gionyoshi, and well, it didn't take too long for him to finish him off. And he's trying to produce a spectacular performance here on his opening fight of his professional career. Oh, left hand goes in. Dunyushi is in trouble. He really felt the power of that left hook. Well, he's getting to his feet, but I'm not sure he wants too much of it. And Howard Foster says no more. And Fury has started with a first round victory. Fury had six more fights in the span of seven months, winning all of them via knockout in the first four within the first four rounds. In 2009, just one year into his professional career, he won his first title, defeating John McDermott via decision for the English heavyweight belt. But many believe that McDermott was the rightful winner. Fury put those worries to bed when he put McDermott on the canvas in the rematch in 2010, not once, not twice, but three times before winning via knockout in round nine. This time, he does get it right. 
In 2011, just months before his fight against Derek Chisora for the British and Commonwealth heavyweight title, Fury's father was arrested and sentenced to 11 years in prison after gouging out the eye of a fellow traveler at a car auction. Fury's father begged the judge for mercy, saying, I'm worried about my son. His boxing career is on the line. If I could give my own eye to him to get back to my children, I would. Despite the absence of his father, Fury pressed on and began to train with his uncle Huey Fury instead. Fury defeated Chisora via decision in July of that year, only to vacate both the British and Commonwealth titles in 2012 to pursue a future world title match. Fury would go on to win the Irish heavyweight title and beat American boxer Vinnie Matalone for the WBO Intercontinental Heavyweight title via technical knockout. Fury was 19-0 with 13 of his wins coming via knockout. During his rise, he also drew plenty of attention for his entertaining press conferences and exuberant personality. I'm, I'm looking at this. Please. Come everybody. Come to the borders, take a look at this. I got you. Look at the chubbiness of him. Okay. Mr. Chubby Jacker. Okay. Bigger they are, the harder they fall. Listen, that's only what small people the say. They fall. Listen, I can guarantee you, bigger they are, the harder they punch, the better than they are. His next win came against American world title contender Kevin Johnson via decision and then would have to face the highly ranked former cruiserweight world champion Steve Cunningham. I'm just wondering if the bottom of Steve's boots have been sponsored because as there's going to be a lot of people watching around the world. It wouldn't come easy. Fury fought wildly in the first two rounds of the bout and Cunningham was able to floor him in the second round with a right hook. But Fury bounced back up and delivered Cunningham the first ever knockout of his career in the seventh round. Good body shot. Steve's almost done here. Look at this. Uh, there's another cut and then he's down. Cunningham is knocked down by Fury. In July of 2015, it was confirmed that Fury would finally have his crack at a world title against boxing Hall of Famer Vladimir Klitschko in a world heavyweight showdown for the WBA, IBF, WBO, IBO, Lineal, and the ring heavyweight titles. Klitschko was heavily favored going into the bout, and in the pre-fight press conferences, things got very chippy between the two boxers. I'm your therapist, and now it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a compliment. It was a compliment. It was a compliment. Call me a clown again! I... Call me a clown! Fool! Clown. Clown. All right. So... Listen, you should take it as a compliment. It's a very tough job. It's a tough job. Okay, I, I just... I just... I just continue. I just continue what I said. I'll fight now. I don't have to wait till October. You need a therapy. I'll fight now. I will save you. Yeah, you'll be saved. The fight took place in Dusseldorf, Germany, and for a heavyweight bout between two of the best boxers in the world, it was rather uneventful. Both Klitschko and Fury showed little offense during the 12 rounds, but Fury was more active, landing 86 of his 371 punches thrown, compared to Klitschko's 52 of 231. And in the end, Fury had done it. He won by unanimous decision, handing Klitschko his first loss in 11 and a half years. In the post-fight interview, a Fury that was overwhelmed by emotions dedicated the fight to his uncle and former trainer Huey Fury, who had passed just a year prior. I'm dedicated to Tyson. I just want to dedicate this to my uncle Huey. Yes, Tyson. Tyson Fury. He started me from the beginning. Fury had reached the mountaintop. He had gone from an outsider to one of the most recognizable faces of the sport, but his next battle would turn out to be with his mental health. Following months of negotiations for a rematch with Klitschko, which was scheduled to take place in Fury's hometown of Manchester, Fury said he had no motivation to fight anymore and had gained an extreme amount of weight, reportedly ballooning to as much as 330 pounds. I don't live a strict lifestyle. I don't even live an athlete's lifestyle. It, it's an absolute disgrace to call me an athlete. You couldn't call me an athlete. Absolutely not. I, you know, I'll have to show you what the athlete looks like. <laughs> this is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. There you go. Does that look like a fighter's body? Clearly not. Fat man, that's who beat you. Shame on you, my friend. <laughs> Shame on me. Shame on you, you let a fat me. man beat you. In June of 2016, it was announced the fight would be postponed to a later date due to Fury sustaining a sprained ankle during training. On the exact same day, Fury and his cousin Huey Fury were charged by UK anti-doping with the presence of a prohibited substance named Nandrolone, which is a type of steroid from a sample that was taken 16 months prior in February of 2015. 
Fury and his cousin denied the charges, and in September of 2016, the rematch was postponed again and Fury was declared medically unfit. Fury reportedly failed another drug test, this time for cocaine. Later that year, Fury told Rolling Stone, I'm going through a lot of personal demons, trying to shake them off. This has nothing to do with my fighting. I've not been in a gym for months. I've been going through depression. I just don't want to live anymore. I've had enough of it. Never mind cocaine. I just didn't care. I don't want to live anymore. By 2017, Fury had vacated most of the titles he had just won by defeating Klitschko because he was unable to defend them. Fury and his cousin went through a legal battle with UK anti-doping for over a year until an agreement was made to resolve the charges. In December of 2017, after nearly two years away from boxing, Fury announced his return to the sport by tweeting, guess who's back? What followed came to be known as one of the greatest comebacks in boxing history. When Fury was asked about his motivation for returning to boxing, he cited an interview where heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder said that Fury couldn't take him and that he was done. Fury shed the weight that he had gained and also ditched his longtime promoter Mick Hennessy in the process. He beat 39-year-old Albanian Sefer Safari in four rounds and then beat two-time world title challenger Francesco Pianetta via decision after he landed over 44% of the power punches he threw. After the fight, Fury revealed that he could have finished off Pianetta earlier, but instead he wanted the cardio, saying, I got 10 rounds with a very tough man under my belt. I was working on my jabs, slipping punches. I thought that was a step up with the opponent and display. I needed the rounds and I had plenty left in the tank. Defeating Pianetta set up the highly anticipated fight against the champion Wilder. The fight itself was one of the most, if not the most entertaining boxing match of the decade. It was a back and forth affair, with Fury switching from his orthodox fighting stance to southpaw midway through, which helped him land some brutal counters against Wilder. In round 9, Wilder dropped Fury with a short left hook followed by an overhand right. Fury beat the 10 count and survived the round. Fury dominated rounds 10 and 11 with Wilder seemingly tired, but in round 12, Wilder landed a right-left combination, which put Fury down hard on his back, and seemingly, the fight was over. Wilder had won. Or did he? Were you out? Yeah. For a few seconds. And then what went through your mind? Get up. The same thing that goes through 90% of the fighters' minds when they're down. It's what we're taught from kids as a boxers. When you get put down, you get back up. You said to me and Big Bear in our interview before, if I can open my eyes, I'll get up. And that's what exactly what happened. Yeah. Notre Dame. After 12 grueling rounds, the fight was scored a draw. Both fighters immediately called for a rematch. After the fight, Fury secured a five-fight contract with ESPN and Top Rank worth $100 million. He became an advocate and spokesperson for issues around mental health and depression, and wrote a book about his life titled Behind the Mask, My Autobiography, which was released in 2019. He even made multiple appearances on WWE, SmackDown, and Raw. I'm a heavyweight champion of the world. How many heavyweight titles have you won? Whoa! Whoa! And Strowman just picked up Tyson Fury! Strowman and Fury going at it! Look at the security! In June of 2019, he defeated WBO Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion Tom Schwartz in Las Vegas by a knockout in the second, but the fight is most remembered for Fury just playing with his food. Schwartz trying his best. Look at Fury! What unbelievable upper body movement defensively! Four punches missed with the head movement. He's got everything here in this second round going. And now a combination punching, and Schwartz goes down! This is a master class right now! He then fought once more, a unanimous decision over Otto Valin three months later, before climbing back into the ring for a highly anticipated rematch with Wilder in February 2020. In preparation for his fight with Wilder, Fury bulked up and weighed in at 273 pounds, 16.5 pounds more than in their first fight, compared to Wilder's 231. The second fight was a very different fight compared to part one. Backed by a new trainer, Sugar Hill Stewart, this time, instead of letting Wilder dictate the pace, Fury took the fight right to Wilder, seemingly unafraid of Wilder's prodigious power. Fury dropped Wilder not once, not twice, but three times and caused Wilder to bleed heavily from his mouth and his ear.
midway through the seventh round after a flurry of hard hitting shots, Wilder's corner threw in the towel. Fury received widespread praise for his performance, having wiped out the favored KO artist Wilder. Fury, who has said himself he never resembled the prototypical heavyweight fighter, had turned into a star. The Wilder rematch set a new live gate record for heavyweight fights in the state of Nevada, surpassing Evander Holyfield's rematch with Lennox Lewis in November 1999. Both from an entertainment standpoint and a boxing standpoint, a rematch and a trilogy was almost a given. But with the pandemic, it was continuously postponed, and in October of 2020, Fury said he'd moved on from the fight, claiming Wilder's team had moved back the fight multiple times, causing him to lose belief that Wilder really wanted to climb back in the ring with him. With Wilder out of the picture, Fury is set for an undisputed heavyweight title fight against fellow Briton Anthony Joshua, with the fight tentatively scheduled for July or August in Saudi Arabia. The last heavyweight fighter to be called undisputed heavyweight champion was Lennox Lewis, and it hasn't happened in the four belt era. Both fighters could reportedly earn $75 million for their troubles too. Through the Gypsy King's 11 year career, he's never lost, has won 21 of his 30 victories via knockout, won countless titles, and his outspokenness about his own mental health problems has become a testament to the fact that it is possible to overcome the obstacles you face in your life. Fury is the first boxer ever to defeat two champions who had 10 or more defenses of their world championship. He also became the third heavyweight after Muhammad Ali and Floyd Patterson to hold the Ring Magazine title twice, and the first heavyweight in history to have held the WBA, WBC, IBF, WBO, and the Ring Magazine titles. Throughout his life, Fury has constantly been an outsider, one who's been counted out, knocked down, and even doubted, but he kept bouncing back up, which is why his story truly is one of the greatest comebacks in boxing history. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.